Hey all you little monsters, this little monster girl Desi, coming at ya. And today I'll be reading aloud a creepypasta titled, A Christmas Warning. But before I start, I want to say that I originally wanted to do a shorter story since this is the first time doing a video like this. But once I found this story and read it, I knew I had to put it on my channel. But I'll also be cutting it in half. So with all that said and done, let's get started. I don't hide the fact that I hate Christmas. Call me a Scrooge, insult me to no end. But every year I feel a dread greater than anyone who hates the holiday season could ever claim. If you know me personally, you'd assume it's because of my younger brother's disappearance. And you'd be right for the most part. It happened one Christmas morning. By all rights, the two of us should have been sitting by our tree opening the presents and making treasured childhood memories. Instead, I was treated to a day full of police frantically searching our house and neighborhood while questioning my distraught parents. They questioned me too, of course, but as a ten-year-old girl, I didn't have much to say. I had told them that he and I had gone to bed, excited for what the next day had in store for us, and that was the last I saw of him. He just never came down to open his gifts and that was when my mother discovered his room was empty. But that was a lie. I do know what happened to Chris. I know who took him away. And I know that if I told the truth to no one would would believe me, then or now. Santa kidnapped my brother. Please don't laugh. I know how it sounds, and you're right, it sounds ridiculous. He can't be real. And even if he was, he's supposed to be nice to children. But I know what I saw. And it wasn't just some lunatic in a Santa suit either. That man was as real as the cold winter wind that chills down your spine. I suppose I should start by telling you how it all started. Before the holiday was ruined for my family, that Christmas Eve we all left out cookies for Santa. Talked about what we hoped he would bring, and then our parents read The Night Before Christmas to my brother and I. All of them cheerful, mundane traditions for our family. What was different that final year was I was noticeably less enthusiastic about the whole process. It was the first year I had openly stopped believing in Santa Claus. I was a strange and cynical child, much to the concern of my parents. To tell you the truth, until that fateful night, I had never really been a believer in Santa Claus. I mostly just played along to please the adults, but that year, I was tired of all the acting. That's one of the many ways we were so different, my brother and I. You see, Chris was a young, energetic, and curious boy. I remember the year he was taken was also the one where he found out where our parents were hiding our unwrapped gifts weeks ahead of time. He refused to tell his own big sister what she was going to be getting though. Figures, I guess. More importantly, however, being three years younger than me, he was still very much a believer. My flat denials of the existence of Santa Claus only served as a challenge to him and he was determined to prove otherwise. We were heading upstairs to bed when he got my attention. Stay up with me, he said, as he tugged at my pajama sleeve. I'll show you, he's real. We'll catch him in the act. I bet we'll be the first ones to have ever done it. And I'm sure he'll give us all kinds of stuff when we do. I sighed. I'd rather just get some sleep, Chris, I told him. You can go on believing if you want, but I don't have to just to have a good Christmas. I always tried to avoid being a damper on his spirit, and I thought convincing him to forget his harebrained schemes would be better than waiting up half the night, just to see him disappointed. Oh, come on, sis, he cried. Do I always have to make you have fun? If it weren't for me, you'd turn into a boring old lady just like Miss Mrs. Henderson. I must have had a disgusted look on my face, because Chris laughed, and gave a mischievous grin. 
Well, what's it going to be, Mrs. Henderson? Are we going to catch Santa in the act or not? Mrs. Henderson was my fourth grade teacher, and I despised the old crone with a passion. Chris knew how to push my buttons. All right, short stuff, you're on, I said with more enthusiasm than I actually felt. First to fall asleep has to wait till New Year's to open their gifts from Santa. Chris's eyes flashed with excitement at the wager. I'll take that bet. So we went to our rooms to wait for our parents to turn in to go to bed. After the lights downstairs went out, I waited about a half an hour just to make sure they were asleep, and I crept out of bed and snuck my way downstairs. I saw a light on in the living room. Chris was sitting casually near the fireplace. What took you so long? he asked. Always the confident one. I waited for mom and dad to go to sleep, idiot, I replied. They're not going to be too happy if they find us here. With an unceremonious plop, I sat down on the couch, directly in front of the fireplace. So, how do you expect to stay up the entire night? I asked. Mmm, I'll figure it out, Chris said. I'm not sure how long we waited there for the so-called Saint Nick to appear. But Chris looked almost ready to doze off when we were shocked awake by something that must have been large and heavy, hitting the roof. After a short pause, there was a sound of shuffling and the scraping of feet. I was sure I heard the ringing of bells. Oh man, Chris whispered in awe, it's really him! For a moment, I wondered why mom and dad weren't awake at any of this. All this racket was enough to wake the dead, but the train of thought stopped when the chimneys sh started sprinkling down into the fireplace. Chris dashed over to me and shook my shoulders. What did I tell you? He's real! He's real! Unlike Chris, I didn't think there was any supernatural explanation behind the strange occurrence. I was convinced it was a burglar finding their way through unconventional means. I sat stiffly staring at the fireplace for a few moments, unsure of what to do, until I rose and dived beneath the couch to hide. What are you doing? Chris cried in bewilderment. He's coming! Get down! I whispered fiercely at him. We don't know who that really is. Chris opened his mouth to protest, but a voice let out a grunt from the chimney, and it spooked him enough to find a spot of his own. He hid behind Dad's large leather lounge chair in the corner. A few moments later, a final loud thump came, and the front of the fireplace was obscured by all the soot rushing out into the air. I covered my mouth and nose, trying desperately to prevent myself from coughing. When it finally settled, a sight gave my cynical mind a serious shock. The old man that stood before me really was someone dressed as Santa Claus and he looked every inch the part. His body was the perfect size, he had a long white beard, and his outfit was beautifully made, red jacket and pants. His face contained the soft, loving features of an old man enjoying the moment. What surprised me the most about this strange man was even though he had entered through a musty chimney, there wasn't a single spit of soot on him. It was almost as if anything that could mar his perfect appearance was naturally repelled. I was finally convinced he was the real deal by what came next. Throwing a sack of presents over his shoulder, Santa stepped away from the fireplace, and a short elf girl emerged to follow him. The elf had pointed ears, a glistening green suit, and was so short she only came up to Santa's knee. Unlike the jolly old man, she seemed terrified to take a single step into our home. She looked all around as if there was some terrible threat in the room, and seemed only slightly relieved when she mistakenly thought it was empty. Santa noticed her fear, but rather than reassure her as would be expected, for a fraction of a second, his kind face changed into a look of pure, horrifying malice. It was like the kind old man had been replaced by an insane, merciless master, only to return an end a second later. The elf's mood changed on a dime. In a short order, she was filling our stockings with small toys and candy. 
with a smile plastered onto her face that seemed ready to crack at any moment. Being so short, she had to use some kind of magic to levitate so she could get within reach. With purposeful yet quiet footsteps, Santa made his way to our tree. Taking two presents from his bag, he placed them in the proper spot and went to where he had left his traditional snack. The elf was done with her job too, but Santa wasn't inclined to share with his companion. Now that she was telling the line, he barely even acknowledged her presence. She just stood there next to him, waiting for him to finish, wringing her hands in nervous movements. On his face, the whole scene seemed like something st ripped straight from a Christmas television special. But, even at my young age, I could tell that something more was going on. What I'm trying to say is, it seemed like they were attempting to appear whimsical for whimsy's sake. Like it was all one big act they were trying to put on. The little elf barely passed as convincing actress, and Santa's momentary lapse only cemented my suspicions. It was something I was unable to articulate fully at the time, but I can now. It looked like a ruse. Chris fell for it right away, though. He must have been too young to notice the sinister signs that I'd been able to pick up on. From my angle on the floor, I could see him clearly in his own hiding spot. The look on his face told me everything I needed to know. He was completely enamored with these two people. To my horror, he slowly crept out from behind the chair. I wanted to call out to him, to tell him to stay right where he was, that these two were strangers, and there was no way he could tell what would happen once they knew we were there. But that would have given us both away. It's not like he wouldn't have listened to me either. How many kids out there can't help but trust Santa Claus? Wow, we whispered to our bizarre intruders. It's really you! At this, both Santa and his elf turned to find Chris standing in the middle of the room. Both had this fox expression of surprise that only served to unsettle me further. Waiting up for us, I see, Santa commented with a warm smile. Yeah, Chris said cheerfully. I wanted to prove that you were really real in everything. And it seems you have, Santa replied with a chuckle. He sat down in my father's chair and motioned for Chris to sit with him, to which he obliged. Oh man, I got so many questions, Chris explained. Are the reindeer on the roof? Can I see them? What's it like living in the North Pole? Oh, I wish I could see it someday. All in good time. Santa said, grinning at his remark. All in good time, Santa said, grinning at his remark. Maybe to some, it would have looked like a friendly expression, but to me, it was a smile that seemed to contain the self-satisfaction of winning the game. As for the elf, she had lost all color in her face. She made no move whatsoever as the two sat together, but her expression was enough to tell me that something horrible was about to happen. I knew you were real! I just knew it! Chris said. And all the big kids at school gave us such a hard time about it. Even Sis was losing it, too. Just wait until everyone hears about this. They won't, Chris, Santa said, clasping his gloved hands over my brother's shoulder. Huh? Why not? Chris asked, confused. Do I have to keep it a secret? Santa laughed a deep, evil laugh that was too much unlike his fabled ho ho ho. Do you honestly think that you've been the only one to ever see me? That throughout history the many little children of the world haven't done the same as you? Chris shifted uncomfortably in the man's lap. I guess not. You see, Chris, Santa began, children are not to be trusted. They are the ignorant greedy and selfish offspring of humans. A greedy and selfish race to begin with. Over the years, I've been able to sustain myself on these humans' qualities, and the humans have happily whitewashed my persona in order to slate their desires without guilt. It's a perfect reason for it. Don't you agree, my dear boy? The excitement in Chris's face was all but gone now. He was finally starting to get it. 
The children who seek me out always want something, Santa said. More meaningless possessions, satisfaction of curiosity, or simple proof are only a few examples. However, there is always a price to be paid for breaking the rules, and finding something that is not meant to be found. Throughout this conversation, the elf began to gather the gifts they had brought with a hint of reluctance. She even managed to make the cookies Santa ate magically reappear. She was ridding the house of any evidence of their presence. Santa's hand squeezed Chris's shoulders tight. I'm always looking for more helpers, he continued. Children who have seen me, who could not keep such a secret, are the perfect candidates. My brother's face turned to an expression of absolute fear. He now realized his fatal error. You are not the first, he said. You certainly won't be the last. Turning to his elf, Santa barked out a command. Annabelle, it's time. Change him now. No, p please, I... The elf stammered. Please, don't make me. Santa gave her a cruel look of disdain and waved his hand towards her in an odd way. I was horrified to see the elf suddenly start clawing frantically at her face, digging her nails into her own skin. She screeched in pain, unable to stop harming herself. Santa waved his hand again, releasing her from her torture. Her face was now covered in scratches and dripping with blood. Chris screamed and dove off of Santa's lap, trying to rush out of the room. But the old man made another strange wave with his hand, and Chris stopped in his tracks. As if possessed, my brother turned around to face him, his eyes wide with fear. He was under the awful man's control. Don't you see? It's too late for you now, Santa said triumphantly. Accept your fate. With a smug grin, Santa looked to his companion. I should really start having you wear all red, he said in a mocking tone. At least then the blood wouldn't show so much. Are you going to do as you're told now, Annabelle? Or do I have to think of something worse for you? And for today, that's where the story ends. Did you guys enjoy the story? If you liked it, please like, share, or subscribe. And if you guys want me to finish reading it aloud, leave a comment down below. I really enjoy reading creepypastas, and this was kind of fun, though it was a bit hard trying to get around the grammar in this story. I'm pretty sure I screwed up a few times. But if you guys have any suggestions for creepypastas I could read aloud on my channel, please message me on one of my social medias. And if you guys want to read the story for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description. And with all that said and done, I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye! Thank you.